Well, we have the brake pad light illuminated. So either the pads are worn down or the sensor is malfunctioning. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at that today. Well, I found the problem. So as you can see, this uh, sensor wire broke off from the pad here on the inside right there. That's where it was supposed to be uh, originally connected at. And uh, it just broke right off. But um, for the meantime, I'm going to put this pad back on. It still has life left in it. And I'm going to order new front uh, pads and rotors for this car. And uh, I'm actually going to install this wire back into the connector. I'm just going to connect these two wires inside here together to complete the circuit. So the computer thinks that the uh, sensor is still intact. That way when I start the car I won't have that annoying beep and the uh, indicator lamp won't be on anymore. As you can see we have a little fray in this insulation here. I thought this was the issue but no it was uh, right here. So it just broke off. As you can see the pad the way it's worn out there. See that step? Uh, that's it just wore out right there and uh, broke the wires right there. So the sensor actually did its job. Sometimes these sensors will um, fray and you know they'll wear out like this one did and the wires will break prematurely and your pad will still be good and a lot of guys you know they'll they'll do the same thing I'm gonna do just connect this uh, loop here that way the sensor goes out and that annoying beep won't happen anymore so I'm gonna do that and then I'm actually gonna order new pads and rotors for this car now this my golf only has the sensor on the front left uh, the front right doesn't have the sensor so as you can see uh, the wiring right there that's where the sensor goes and that was on the uh, inside pad so I'm due for new rotors as well but yeah that's uh, that's the issue so I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you guys what I'm going to do here next. Alright guys, so I went ahead and stripped this uh, insulation, took this off, uh, took this little rubber um, grommet piece off here, and this is what I'm left with. So what I'm going to do is strip this black insulation off these wires, uh, basically just try to solder these two together, or if you don't have... Uh, solder maybe you can just like twist them and uh, put a wire nut on them and then tape it real good with some good quality electrical tape like this here um, this is what I like to use is good vinyl electrical tape but anyway yeah so get a if you have wire strippers great go ahead and strip this insulation off uh, twist these copper wires together solder it or tape it and just plug it back in you should be good to go uh, it's nice if you have a wire stripper because you can find the right gauge this is I don't know what gauge this is and just one swipe strip it uh, but I'm gonna use the utility blade and just gently strip this insulation off and be careful because you can cut this copper wire these are light gauge stranded uh, wire together here so just be very gentle and you can do this but uh, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and have at it here. All right, I stripped the black insulation off and I went ahead and twisted these wires together um, up this far. And what I'm going to do now is um, apply some solder to this twisted area. And I can cut these um, ears off here. I don't need that on there. Once I solder this little bit here, I'm going to tuck it down inside and then tape it real good and uh, should be good to go so I'm going to go ahead and try this soldering here I'm not the best solderer but uh, we'll see how it goes let the solder gun warm up a bit and then we'll apply this solder here and uh, see how it goes Alright, there we 
go. It's starting to melt here. All right, let's see. It's not too bad for an amateur. <laughs> Nobody's going to see it anyway. Probably could apply a little bit more on this side. All right, that should do it. Let that cool for a little bit. I also have this heat shrink tubing assortment. I might put some heat shrink tubing on it. This right here, this is good to have. All different sizes, little kit. You can get this anywhere at Amazon. I think that's a Harbor Freight. But uh, yeah, I give you an assortment. It's good for things like this. I think I might use this small size here, cut it, and that should slide right over top of that wire there, apply some heat. If you have a heat gun, perfect. If not, go steal your uh, girlfriend, wife, or mother's blow dryer, and uh, that'll work. All right, instead of taping it, I have a better idea. I'm just gonna slide this right over top, and as soon as I get it back into its original position, I'll uh, cut this end here and just cap it maybe with uh, some caulking something like that or you could tape the end of it what do you want to do whatever you want to do but this is a good tight seal to keep all the water and debris out of there all right guys here's the finished product that's what it looks like put some caulking on the end there this is what I used right here it's black you can use clear whatever color you want nobody's gonna see it So now we can go ahead and plug this in. We should be good to go. All right, that's what it looks like once it's installed. Got the caliper back on, pads back on. So now we can go ahead and uh, put the key in the ignition and turn it on and see if that light is out. There we go. Solve that problem. All right, one last look at it, make sure everything's okay. We can put the wheel back on. But yeah, I think that's good to go. Uh, what's nice about this is you can take this off and if you ever decide to you know, get the pads with the sensors, well, you can just unplug this, plug the uh, new sensor in, and you're good to go again if you wanna keep that set up. If not, you just Keep running this thing. So, all right, guys. I hope it helps you out. Um, thanks for watching. Check out all of my other uh, Mark IV videos out there, and uh, keep on doing it yourself and saving money. Take care.